what I'm going to do here uh, for people that, uh, that work with Power Pivot a lot, uh, one of the things you know is that you need a uh, calendar in order to be able to drive any kind of calendar intelligence. And one of the big challenges that uh, that's out there is where do you get a calendar? You might be able to get one from a SQL Server routine if you have a SQL Server and a friendly IT department that can help you out. But if you don't, that can be a non-starter. Uh, if you could reach out to the internet, but if you're not always going to be connected while you're doing your work, that can also be a non-starter. You could build one in the Excel table, but that gives problems with updating. When you need to update things, you have to keep on adding new rows to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, actually one of the techniques that's, uh, that's in our book on how to actually create a calendar table uh, using Power Query. I'm not going to do it exactly the same as what's in the book. I'm going to do it a little bit differently here, but uh, regardless, there's lots of ways, and here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm in Excel 2016. This works in Excel 2010. It works in Excel 2013. It works in. Um, it would work in Power BI Desktop as well, actually, if you uploaded the worksheet that has the the range of data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my uh, my table here, and we'll say from table, and we'll bring this into Power Query, and we'll just wait for Power Query to load up for us. And here we go. There we go. So. What we've got is we've just got the simple table here. Now, one of the things that's kind of interesting about this is that um, I'm actually going to get rid of this change type step only because it's just kind of an ugly uh, word here. What it's doing is it's actually setting the first column to text and the second one to a date. I don't need to worry about that because I'm going to be making some choices to force some things later. So I'm just going to knock that off. What gets interesting with, uh, with Power Query is when you click this little FX step, you can add a new step. And it always refers back to the previous one. So this one you can see in my formula bar is referring to source. If I want to refer to a specific column in that source, I can put that in square brackets. So source value. And that would give me a record, that, a list that actually shows me these two values. And I can drill directly into the first one by putting in between curly brackets a zero. That will allow me to get into the first number in that uh, specific column. And it's zero because Power Query is zero based. It starts counting from zero. Now that's great. I'm going to knock this step off here because I don't really need it. Um, so we'll just uh, right click and delete this. We just want to keep in mind here. Actually, it won't even let me delete it. Perfect. We'll go back to here. I'm going to create a new step. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom list here. Instead of saying referring to the source, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with equals curly bracket zero dot dot ten curly bracket. And this will create a new list instead of referring back to the source. Now I should be able to get rid of that extraneous step I had. But that doesn't really help me with a calendar, but what would is if I can actually drill into this guy here and use it as my starting date. So why don't I do that? I'll go in, instead of using the zero, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that value to a number. To do that I say number dot from open brackets and then we're going to say the source step, the value column, the first number that's in that area, and we'll close our bracket. So that'll give me the number starting from whatever that first date is. And as we go and look at it and say number.from, it will convert that date into the date serial number. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing for number 10 here. Oops, I don't want the dot dot at the end of it. I'll get rid of those in a second. There we go. But instead of grabbing the first row, I'm going to grab the second row, which in Power Query, because it starts counting from zero, that would be index of number one. And we teach all this stuff as we go through the deep dive in the book of how to actually refer to these things. But when I hit enter, you'll see I get a big long list that goes from 41,640 all the way down to a number at the end, somewhere 708 rows later on mm -hmm. down. No big deal. I can take this now and I can say, you know what, let's convert this list to a table by clicking this button here. And it does. And it says, all right, if you have errors, whatever. We just say, OK. I'm going to rename this to date, because plainly that looks like dates, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to right click, change type, date. Boom. Boom. I've now got my calendar. So let's call it calendar here, because that would uh, be a great name for it. And now I can start going back and saying, geez, you know, I want to add the other columns that I might want. So I'll just go select the date column and go to add column. We'll go to dates, and why don't we take the, uh, let's build a column that has the start of year. Or let's go back to date and say, you know what, let's get the date and let's get the end of the year. Mm. Or let's grab the date and let's go and grab, say, the month. Mm. And we can go and we can grab, say, the day. You get the idea of what we can do here is we can actually pull up all kinds of cool stuff. 
One thing you don't find in here, though, and I'm hoping this comes soon, uh, Power Query gets updated every single month, by the way, with new features and new stuff. just lights up with a new update one day. One of the things that's not in here is a one-click transformation to get month in the format MON. Or, sorry, MON. That wouldn't work so well for month. Uh, what we're looking for is we're looking for JAN for January. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, what we have to do is we actually have to add a custom column. And on this one here, let's go and call this one month. Uh, we'll call it to do this, we need to say date dot to text, and what we'll do is we'll take our original date, and just like Excel here, we'll say MMM, close our brackets, and say OK. And this is really confusing when you first see this, and this happens to me every single time I do this. <laughs> the lowercase m is actually minutes. Yeah. Not I was month. just thinking that. Yeah. And this totally blows my mind every time. I always get this backwards. So instead, what you got to do is you got to go with capital M's. And if you go with capital M's, boom, there, there we go. go. If you want to have this as the full month, you can go with a full-on M here. If you want to get into actually building your uh, your custom date format to exactly how you want, you can go with date dot two text, and we'll grab that date, and we'll say let's try this one M M M D D. Y, 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 brackets, D, D, D. And if all this works, we get some nice cool. dates that are formatted exactly as we want. So this is awesome because now all we need to do if we want to load it to, uh, to say, Power Pivot is we'd hit Close and Load 2, and we would choose to, uh, to create only connection and add it directly to the data model if we're using 2013 or 2016, uh, or we could load it uh, directly to a table in a worksheet, and what you'll see is that um, it will go and actually build us an entire date calendar uh, that goes from January 1st, uh, 2014, all the way down to December 9th, 2015. Why December 9th, 2015? Because in my original calendar, I drove this with the today function. So I can actually start now building a calendar that automatically refreshes for me um, that, that's built based on a formula set that I know and already love, which is just awesome. So so there you go. There's a uh, there's a tip for you on, on how to use Power Query. To do some cool things. Good tip. Very nice. Five sriracha's. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So right that's nice. it. The M is for Data Monkey. Go check this out with Ken Poles yeah. and Miguel Escobar. I'll just and tell you, I think that's like Chapter 23 or something is where we get into custom calendars. At, uh, oh, Chapter 24 is ca calendar tables. Chapter 23 is parameter tables. So, yeah, really useful ones. Oh, I found, found myself going through the book and looking for that as you were doing it. That's pretty cool. So. <laughs> there you go. Well,